Here, hello. I know you've probably been wondering how breathtaking custom floors, walls, ceilings, countertops, and all of those surfaces with 3D pictures and breathtaking sceneries were made. Like this, or like this, or like this. It looks difficult, right? Only men can do this, right? Well, you're wrong. Even women who are pregnant can do this with the right tools and materials. Tada! Another myth busted. In this video, a full tutorial video, a DIY video, I'm going to teach you how you can do these amazing finishes step by step. You're probably wondering, how is he going to show me how to do 3D epoxy wearing a shirt and a tie? Well, this is me trying to make you know that making 3D epoxy and all other kind of epoxies are very simple. So simple that even a well-trained dummy can do it using epoxy resin. This is a DIY video, now you should be able to do it yourself. Work with paints, polyurethane, floors, metallic coatings, reflective coatings and many other coatings after this video. So let's get down to business. But before the main goodies, a little about me. My name is Francis David Matthew, popularly known as FDM Len, Africa's king of decorative concrete. Before you continue with this video, do well to subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, like my videos, help me make more useful content for you and keep this channel useful. Make sure you do that and let's go on from the step by step tutorial. Don't trash into beauty, you should watch till the end and see a few tricks up my sleeves. Well, the first things first. You need to get your epoxy resins. Usually they come in two parts, the part A and the part B. We got this one from the Panicrete Industries and this is part A being mixed. Important information, you don't add part B until you're ready to pour. More on that later. Then step one will be surface preparation. Here you will grind your surface. You grind it and clean it. The floor, the walls, the ceilings you intend to work on, you clean them using an angle grinder or walk behind grinder. That surface must be totally clean and free from dust, moisture, stains, and any other particles. After grinding, you could use your leaf blower, vacuum cleaner, mop, and duster for cleaning. Then begins the actual work. Step two. We're done with surface preparation now, and we need to prime. We'll be using Panicrete Industries PRM100 for priming. It is epoxy based but with some kind of additives that ensures increased bonding of the substrate to other layers we'll be placing on top. If you're wondering what a substrate is, let me make it a bit clearer to you. A substrate is any surface you intend to place your 3D epoxy or any other epoxy upon. The range, it could range from smoothly finished concrete regular tiles, wood, stone coat countertops, terrazzo floors, grid walls, granite, and all other kinds of flooring models and others. Now see, I'm going to show you a representation of what a 3D epoxy installation process looks like in layers. Regardless of whatever surface you are installing your 3D epoxy upon, be it smoothly finished concrete, regular tiles, wood, stone coat countertops, terrazzo floors, squid walls, granite, or whatever kind, your 3D epoxy installation process looks like this in layers. You have the substrate, the primer, the mid coat, the vinyl, popularly called SAV as the self-adhesive vinyl, the clear top coat. The substrate is the already existing layer of surface, then the primer and the mid coat will come upon the substrate and so on. Here we use the PRM100 to prime. Panicrete's PRM100 primer has a mix ratio of four parts of component A to one part of component B. Now you want to pour out your measures, four measures of part A into the mixing bowl and then add the one part of part B into the mixing bowl as well. So you have four parts of A to one part of B. Remember to agitate your mix properly before you measure them out as they must have sat idly in shipping containers for a while before getting to your home depot, departmental stores and then finally getting to you. Now you've mixed properly part A and part B of the PRM100 epoxy. Begin to apply using a paint roller in forward and backward strokes. Primers should be applied lightly. Think of it as applying glue to the sole of your shoes that came off. Quickly cover the entire surface area. Cover every inch of the floors you intend to with the primer. 
here we prime the terrazzo and a rough tile floor surface. I told you earlier on that it's so easy a pregnant woman can make it. Well, here is the proof. A lady is doing it. Already watch how she deftly handles it from start to finish. She happens to be one of my very first students in my training school. Well, now she's doing it herself. You'll see further down in the video how she magically finishes things off like a pro. This is a terrazzo floor surface and we need it to completely soak up the primer. Terrazzo floor surfaces or terrazzo surfaces are porous, hence we must sufficiently coat it with the PRM100 epoxy. Tiled surface consumes less amount of the PRM100 epoxy than all other substrates during coatings. Now, the moment we're done priming, after a 12 hour duration, we come back for step 3. Allow the primed surface to stay idle for 12 hours, no entry, no traffic, and nothing. And then, you move on to step 3. You have to start the mid coat layer with step 3. We use the IMC 200 epoxy for this layer from Panicut Industries. After mixing the components separately, we measure out 4 parts components A of the IMC 200, pour into a mixing bowl, remember to wear surgical gloves to protect your fingers and then add a little quartz to give grit and toughness to the floor. Add one part of part B of IMC 200 to your mix and mix some more to even out all the ingredients together. You must ensure that you have an homogeneous mix then you begin to place IMC 200 epoxy. Remember you need a spike shoe. Um, we showed you earlier on how to install your spike shoe. Let me show you how to install your spike shoe, your newly purchased spike shoes. Spike shoes are heavily needed in your epoxy kits installation. Bike shoes make it possible for you to walk over freshly paced epoxy without damaging them. So you can easily walk on fresh epoxy that isn't dried yet and bring no damage to your work in progress. Spike shoes can be worn over your boots, your shoes or directly onto your flip flops and then you're ready to pour. Take great care when pouring using flip flops as it's difficult getting epoxy paint coatings to wash up from the skin when they get dried upon it. This is a great tip for beginner epoxy resin projects so you don't run into issues on your first epoxy pour. It can cost you tons of money if you screw up on your pour and discourage you from attempting another pour. This is why in this video I try to make it as simple as possible and I'm mentioning only the important tools that you'll be needing on the pouring of your epoxy projects. Now, Spreading the mid coat could be done with a squeegee, a paint brush for touch ups and at the, end, at the edges and a spike roller to prevent the bubbles from building up after your pour is complete. Bubbles in epoxy projects are a nasty bummer for installations that could cost you to lose thousands of US dollars if you don't address them properly. Bubbles are caused by air pockets trapped underneath your epoxy. Spike rollers will release the trapped air under your epoxy and then prevent bubbles from showing up after your work and messing up the entire work. That's the use of the spike rollers. They have spikes that would perforate or puncture the bubbles that will be existing underneath your IMC 200 application, that's the mid coat layer, if there exists any. Spike rollers will go there, puncture the bubbles and allow the air or the trapped air, the air pocket to come out. So you choose your preferred method of spreading. Spread your MC200 to form your mid coat area all over the substrate you primed earlier on. Remember it has to be 12 hours before you begin the mid coat layer. Um, use your preferred tool, it could be a scraper, it could be a squeegee and it could be a spike roller. I prefer the spike rollers. To be on the safe side. Spread your IMC 200 epoxy all over the place. And then I like to walk over the freshly poured epoxy. It feels a little bit squishy underneath the spike shoes. I like the feel of that. But most importantly, I look out for what I might have missed to touch up or forgot to touch, touch up earlier on. And I go ahead to touch up a little and adequately cover every inch of my substrate. Otherwise, my project might be in great grave danger. You see, if you miss a spot and it remains uncovered after installation, your next layer, which is the SAV, the self-adhesive vinyl, you have 
you're gonna have a, a self-adhesive vinyl with a void underneath and no matter how little that void will be at the inception at, at the beginning it will grow into a very big void or a huge hole that will cause your SAV to separate from the mid coat and then the floor will fail in the long run. I want to take my touch-ups very seriously and look keenly upon the freshly poured epoxy to cover any areas that might not have been properly covered to increase the thickness of my MC200 and to make sure that I have it totally covered. Now to increase the thickness of my MC200 and then reduce the fluidity, I'm going to add a little more quartz to my mix. I want it thicker and stronger. Be careful not to add too much quartz as that will increase the volume of the IMC200 epoxy needed. This also increases the cost of materials you'll be using on your project because the thicker your layers, the more epoxy required to cover your work area and also the stronger your mid coat layers will become and in, stronger, and in turn the stronger your floors be. The ideal thing is to find a balance. Depending on the cost you're being paid to do the project, how much you're willing to spend on epoxy materials alone and the amount of traffic that will move on the area and a host of other factors. You determine the amount of quartz you want to be using or you would like to use on that project. The quartz serves as a form of thickener. IMC 200 comes in different colors. We've exhausted the first bucket so we need to mix another batch. It's a repetitive process. Measure out mix component A pour four parts component A into the mixing bowl, mix component B, pour one part of component B of the IMC200 epoxy into the mixing bowl, mix the both components together, agitate properly, add quartz and then begin to spread it over your work area. It is important I follow the mix ratio perfectly and avoid any guesswork or shortcuts. Things could go wrong really fast if we get too careless and mix the wrong ratios or we are unable to mix it properly to get a thorough mix. Sometimes you get to see the epoxy installations that refuse to dry and remain tacky and soft, more like a properly chewed chewing gum days after installation. Yes, that's a problem that most epoxy installers get to face on a continuous basis. I will deal with it right now. Usually, epoxy hand installation hardens between 8 to 24 hours after they are poured. Most epoxy are uh, epoxies harden at the 12 hour mark. If after this curing period the epoxy is still tacky, then you have a problem. The problem most likely to be improper mix ratios or not enough mixing of your components or a combination of both, either of or a combination of both. So we want to mix our epoxies properly even after our mix ratios are correct make sure that we have both components A and B properly and thoroughly mixed in our mix uh, ratio. Now, component B is usually added last. For the IMC 200, your mix ratio is four parts component A and one part component B. Component B is usually added last when you're ready to pour. As it begins the hardening process, you should ensure you empty your mix content between 20 minutes to 1 hour, that's 60 minutes after mixing them. Otherwise, the hardening process kicks off and it becomes hot while in the mixing bowl. At this point, you shouldn't apply it any longer. It's wasted already. Applying it at this time will mess up the entire work process. You need to be very cautious. Remember that you are on a clock. You need to get things done as soon as possible. You also need to measure your materials in batches. Don't try to measure out too much at a time as that will mean that some of what you measure will get to cook and get wasted. Usually if we wanted the reflector floor, we would have left things at this point in this mid coat stage with all the shiny and mirror like coatings and called it a date. However, we still have work to be done by doing a 3D epoxy. We coat the floor surfaces completely coat the walls, curtains, completely walk over with the spike shoes for touch-ups and repeat the process until we are completely covered. Pour out the mix to the floor, spread it like butter on bread. 
spread every inch of your bread have it covered with your butter which is the mc200 in this case now the color difference wouldn't matter as it will be covered by the self-adhesive vinyl the sav as we like to call it will be placed over it once it's properly cured so this difference in color you're noticing while we're working wouldn't be showing when we are done so you have nothing to fear the self-adhesive vinyl or the sav will be covering that remember i told you about mixing in small batches earlier on well here i didn't follow my own advice and so we had some leftovers now we had to use them to make a table you could see how that turned out or how the tables i made turned out in um, the other videos on my youtube channel and how to make tables right on this youtube channel how to make tables from hip hop so you could check out that video and uh, see how i used or quickly used the leftover products from here instead of just wasting it we had some leftover or some worn out tables that required us to do remediation or re re restoration and make them beautiful again we put the leftover boxes to use and we had to put protective bags on the floor to prevent spills from the table well more on that in the other video you could head over to my youtube channel if you're there now go and check the video on epoxy table now back to the mid coating we want to ensure when we're doing epoxies on the outdoors that you don't want to place it where direct rays from the sun gets to them uv rays from the sun causes epoxies to yellow when exposed continually because even the best of epoxies will yellow when exposed to the uv rays this corridor we chose a black or a dark background color or a background color that will hide the yellowing of the epoxy successfully so we can afford to do it here on the corridor because of the grooves in the tiles we are adding much more quartz than usual we want to make sure the grooves are well hidden properly covered and when we are done with the mid coat we want to make sure that everywhere is uh, sealed when preparing mid coat for sav you want to make sure that the finish is glossy and smooth like a mirror else your vinyl will separate from the floor after a while and the floor fails and there will be no proper bonding between the sav the self-adhesive vinyl and your mid coat layer so you want to make sure that every inch of your floor is covered your substrate that has been primed earlier on is completely covered then you can be sure that you won't have your sav or the self-adhesive vinyl separating separating from your mid coat after your work is done you still repeat the same process you continue to repeat your processes like you had been doing earlier on repeat the process from start to finish that's just the mid coat now another important factor you need to know about the mid coat is that when you apply in the mid coat do not leave leftover materials in the bucket do not leave leftover materials in the bucket always pour now if you if you don't put enough quartz you have a very fluid mix you see it's a self-leveling mix when it what we mean by self-leveling is that epoxies always will move to the lowest point on your work area they'll always flow they're like water they'll always flow so you want to make sure that you have a properly leveled surface before applying or when you are applying epoxy otherwise what you have is a runoff of your epoxy for 3d floor before you add um, your mid coat you must make sure that your floors that you're working on is properly leveled and is smooth um, well, once we're done with the mid coat then we go to rest for and wait a while usually for 12 hours if you're using the IMC 200 12 hours after installation it should have hardened in uh, temperate regions where there's much heat it could extend to up to 18 hours well maximum 18 hour window if after 18 hours your mid coat didn't get hard or strong then you might begin to panic because it means that probably there's been an issue with your mix ratio or with your mixing process now at this point there's nothing to do but to wait a little bit more maybe wait for another 12 hours and bring it out to about uh, 28 or 30 hours and after 30 hours go back and check if it still doesn't cure 
then you need to strip off the entire place and start the process from priming again that's the danger of having an improper mix ratio so having done our mid coat we're going to go to the next layer which is the sav layer and the sav layer is the layer that carries all of the pictures the fancy pictures that you see and uh, for you to know what we're using for this um remember when you want to do a vehicle wrap a vehicle wrap you want to brand a vehicle and put all those beautiful images on your vehicle the material used is called an sav so that's what you're looking at now we'll take the high resolution picture of what we want to be in our floor you need to get the high resolution image of whatever you want to be in your floor you could get it from the internet you could get it from various sites um i for one i like to use the i prefer to use the paid uh, areas like getty images and or you could have a very good graphic designer work on the images for you like i did on this particular project because i wanted a custom project that can't be found anywhere so i had to work on my team on my team there's a graphic designer to design images for us and we designed it and you're going to see how beautiful it looks at the end of this video so um after you get your high resolution images you send them to the printer you get them printed on the dimension for the work area then you begin to trim off the excesses the white points that's what we need to do first on the job trim off the excesses remove all the white points on your sav align them properly on your work area align them properly on your work area with the aid of a squeegee and uh, some other tools you begin to lay the sticky part you know the paper we are pulling out now is to reveal the sticky part of the sav if, uh, if you've never used an SAV before, SAV has what we call a self-adhesive background, usually covered with a paper. Now that paper, once you pull it out and separate it from the SAV, will reveal um, a sticky surface. More like the stickers you use on your car, but just a large dimension of it. Now you just stick it onto the mid coat layer that has been properly done smooth out every bubbles this is really a rough work because it was actually done by um, a group of trainees and we just wanted to do see how good it would look it was actually a practical project for a training class actually um, so going on going on to what we're doing you want to spread i let the trainees this once just found out about 3d they've not done it before and they are doing it this much so i let them do it so that they can see how easy it is to actually do a 3d boxing installation you can get um s heavy installers from various areas there are people that are actually very very good at installing sav you could always reach out to them uh, if you're working in an area where you're not confident enough to actually handle or go this on your own you see that's my name custom fdm line in the middle of the stairs there that's how i wanted it so we designed it printed it and now we're installing it all over the floor area you're gonna see how amazing it looks just hold on this is not the end work by the time we're done you see how shiny and reflective the whole thing comes out now basically you want to ensure that your savs are properly aligned they come in bits and pieces if you don't properly align them well you won't see the beauty because the lines of the joints will show forth so you want to make sure that the joints are properly aligned so that they are non-noticeable that's where the work or that's the difference between a professional and just anybody you must make sure your lines are properly aligned you don't see the separation you don't see any difference they just merge and become one yeah, just like we do but well, we're working with two different images on this project the stair image project and the garden image on this project so you will see that what we're doing yes go on they just place yeah place it at the one point of the room and from that point of the room you begin to stretch it stick it to the surface and begin to stretch it to reach the other parts you need to align it properly in some cases you might need to remove and replace remove and place remove and place because they are probably out of line or something but it's okay at the end of the day we just want to ensure that our images are properly aligned and properly placed 
it's important to know to know to only use high resolution images when printing 3d epoxy vinyls or stickers some people call the stickers some people call them vinyl whichever way you or whatever you call it i think you're correct because they all do the same thing uh, you put your stickers on the floor ensure they're properly aligned i can't say that enough because that's one of the major difference you know when you see some of the floors we do they look like they are make believe they look like they are photoshopped onto the floor because we pay particular attention to ensuring that our stickers align properly the better your stickers align the more real your projects will look and the reality of it is we want it to look as real as possible see how those rules are looking very sharp and very nice it won't be too good if they are out of line or out of joint we want to avoid that as much as possible when installing your sav you need to use a neat and a very clean napkin you notice something in common with everybody working on this project they are all putting on a clean pair of socks this is because epoxy has a way of distributing stains if you come upon this surface with just your bare feet or a dirty pair of socks and for any reason the stains from your feet or from your socks comes upon the SAV at the point of installing the SAV or the sticker you would not notice those stains but the moment you are done and you pour your final coat which is the FSC 900 upon the SAV or the sticker you're going to have lots of lots of issues because the FSC 900 epoxy based chemical will take the stains that you have left on the SAV or the sticker and spread it all over the wall. So what you begin to find now is that you begin to see streaks of brown stains all over. Even in areas where there were no stains originally, the epoxy would play with it and spread it down to those areas and you begin to see streak of brown stains all over your floor from beginning to end. Originally it was just limited to a few areas but you see that it will just move to all the other areas so you need to be clean your pair of socks needs to be clean the material you use in installing your SAV needs to be clean everything needs to be speak span clean free from dust and from any form of uh, stains stains from their fingers stains from their hands stains from anything so you must be clean if you're gonna be sweaty if you're the sweaty type then you need to use a glove if you sweat on your palms you need to use a material glove a glove that is made up of uh, wool or cotton to make sure that you don't have any moisture that could bring up stains now this is the SAV we chose for the exterior area because we want to make sure um, for the exterior area because we want to make sure that we hide some of these stains that's the FSC 900 component A and this is the final step this brings us to the final step the FSC 900 component A is a two component mix but unlike the previous materials we've been talking about the FSC 900 has a two to one mix ratio what that means is that for every two measures or every two parts of component A we are measuring out now we are going to be measuring one part of component B so we mixed out the agitation now we are mixing out the component B after we mixed out the component A pour it in a bucket mix it out completely then we're going to be mixing out component B to add to component A and agitate them together it has a milky look but don't worry when we place it or apply it on the floor you see how different it will come out it has that look agitated properly i cannot estimate or i cannot over estimate when it comes to this i rather have extra materials and have not enough materials when it comes to fs900 because if you don't cover your sav what you'll find out is that the sav will get stained and you need to do this process as soon as you finish your sav installation you don't want to leave your sav um, open and exposed to stains or to dirt so as soon as you finish your sav or your sticker installation you need to go to the process of doing the final coat which is using the fsc 900 to coat the sticker or the sav layer you can coat it using a paint roller you can coat it using a squeegee you don't need to wear a spike shoe in this case wearing a spike shoe will damage your sticker so don't wear a spike shoe wear a clean pair of socks use a squeegee or a paint roller to spread 
a rubber squeegee will be best in this process because the sticker is a very tender material and any rough handling will result into it being deformed you don't want it deformed you want it to be intact so use a rubber squeegee or a paint roller now back to what i was telling you about the fs900 the two component material component a and component b is also epoxy based but in this case you are going to be doing a mix ratio of two to one as against four to one that you are familiar with with the earlier epoxy materials we used for the earlier or the layers we did earlier on so ensure that you cover every inch of your sticker with the clear epoxy mix as many as possible this is the build up this is the build up what you're going to find out here is that the amount of material you use will kind of determine how protected your sticker will be if you coat it lightly your sticker won't be properly protected but if you coat it thoroughly then you have a properly coated sticker that could withstand damages from high heel shoes from your stiletto heels from sharp objects from a drop and all of that so you see that at the end we are beginning to take shape you see the roses looking all good you see the staircase looking 3d -ish, the logos and everything all popping in the areas where we've added the fs900 the FS900 does two things. Number one, it protects your SAV or your sticker from damage. Number two, it gives a depth of realism to your sticker. It makes it have that 3D effect, that depth of color, that depth of shine that you're going to be seeing on our project is usually there the moment we add the FS900. You add it, you pour it, and you just spread it. Spread it from the beginning. Usually when working like this, we like to walk our way from the furthest point, from the inside, and walk our way to the door. Because you cannot step over the FS900 to, to touch up. So it's better you walk from the edges. Walk from the edges, walk from the door, um, the furthest part to the door, and walk your way towards the door. When you get to the door, you know you've covered every other area in the room as you will not be having any opportunity to come or climb over to do any touch-ups cover it completely walk your way out the door and you can also call it a date one important thing to note is that you must ensure that your windows are closed your doors are closed and everything is closed because you don't want a situation where insects animals and whatnot will just come into your work area and step on the floor any insects that comes upon the floor at this point becomes a permanent part of your 3d image in fact it becomes a design on your 3d floor and you don't want that so you want to ensure that your windows are properly closed your doors are properly closed prevent any animal from getting to where you did your job prevent any insect from getting to it so we're done and you can see the depth of color the reflection from the lights with the floors we just did that's what the 3d floor does the fs900 that's what it does it gives you that depth of color that you begin to see that you're not just looking at a sticker you can step on it you can trample it you can break a glass on it you can do whatever to it and nothing bad or nothing damaging is going to happen to those floors as long as you use the correct materials that's what the fs900 does it's epoxy based from concrete industries actually and uh, i'm sure you can see how beautiful my floors are with pictures and random images in them i could actually do any kind of image i could think of i could do images of my face i could do it on walls i could do it on ceilings it's that good it's that great and it's a lovely invention and i'm sure that you're glad you can check my videos or my youtube channel for more interesting videos on various other topics that i do from time to time remember to subscribe and uh, leave me a comment in the comment section below tell me let me know what you think about this video is it like is it good do you like it what do you think about the processes was it easy for you to understand let me know and uh, you could help me to make videos that will help you help you to better understand what we're doing here if there's anything you don't understand feel free to reach out i'll do a video to address that and subscribe to my youtube channel tell others about it and then um, bye bye